Yo, welcome in everybody. Welcome to the big show. Nate, thanks for giving me that five second heads up. I love you. I'm right on point. Uh, welcome everybody to the big show. We are here. We're rocking. It's Tuesday. Uh, I have missed the show, Paul. A long weekend, uh, an enjoyable Monday, Memorial Day. We're back with the boys here in the show. I see all the wonderful comments. I see people watching all over the world, which is great to see. Patrons, you know, I see in there. And new names, welcome in. If you're, uh, if you're new to the show, uh, the premise of the show is uh, I- I'm a normal person, perhaps like yourself, asking a couple uh, wealthy, wealth, wealthy cats some questions about investing, business growth, stocks, housing, bonds, life, uh, inflation, Minimum wage, we do it all. Um, today, we, uh, as always, we're taking donations for um, we're taking donations to accept your stock request, which we just got one from Trapper Esner. Welcome in. Um, and Paul, where are the donations going today? So, guys, um, I've already done this one before, but I had a call with them last week, and I'm very impressed with the Innocence Project. And in the last year, they said. They had a, their biggest year ever, and they do not. Did they do not expect to repeat it? Just because of the events of the last year, from a race standpoint, that they think uh, it, it it got a lot of support. But I'm doing the Innocence Project again. Uh, I think they're wonderful. I think they're great. Um, I'm going to continue on with them. I'm not the kind of person who likes to support a thousand charities for myself personally. So I support the Innocence Project on my own, and I would like to do it again to the chat. So their main goal is to exonerate um, people who are. Uh, that can be exonerated through DNA evidence. Ironically, Barry Sheck from the OJ defense team is the founder of the Innocence Project. I made that joke on the uh, on the call, and there was like a awkward chuckle. I was like, "Hey guys, you guys want to get more support?" Just oh, say Bar- Barry Sheck. Oh yeah, Barry Sheck founded oh, the Innocence know Project. That. That's hilarious. That's what I said. I said, "Guys, your slogan should be: We were funded by the guy who got OJ off." And there was like this. <laughs> 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 Awkward silence brought to you by <laughs> yeah, Paul Gabriel. It the was usual, great. That's usual with your comedy. Yeah. Oh, Paul, you had a graph there. You, you know, I'm not going to pull that one up because it has other information on there. It doesn't, Paul. You, you it's still on there. Uh, did you get the but one? You, I sent you, you you took the stuff. You, you didn't take the stuff off that I. I didn't talk to you about that. But okay. Well, either way, um, we just signed our contract today for Morningstar for two more years. Let me before you just get right to it. Let me get to the points, folks. Um, this 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 the show that you're watching uh, was uh, started out as just Paul by himself talking about real estate, and then he decided that he needed someone to play off of, like myself, the old Andy Richter type of Conan thing. But I don't know who Randy Richter, I think I'm more of the Andy Richter than the Conan. So we sat down, and so a lot of you have watched episode number one, which um, is always, uh, Paul starts out by saying how late we started. <laughs> and, uh, and so we've been on this road a while, Paul and I sitting in this room with the help of Tim by ourselves, we had Don on board. And so there's been a few years we were doing this by ourselves, and, um, and, and you know, we were, it took up a, a big portion of our life, Paul, for literally, obviously, not not so much no money, just a, a money, a lot of your money going out the, the window of paying me, paying for the studio, paying for the gear, and, uh, and and sure enough, you're paying for more, Paul. You know, we started at Patreon six months months ago, and we're slowly growing to one of the best pay, top patron pages around, and it's incredible. And Paul, you 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 want to reward our patrons. You want to reward the people who've been following us and supporting the show and, and getting the software. So tell us about what you just purchased for the next two years for the show. And we had another request. So we have Nissan first, then GRFS, and then a, just a, 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 um, a great charity, Susie. Thank you very much for supporting. Same with Reed. Um, Curtis, you got to up that big time. Oh, Croc stock, was that a joke? Okay, so I just signed up for a two-year contract, $200,000 to get our software. And that's gonna increase because I also pay more as our users increase and our users are increasing like crazy. Um, our goal this year was to hit 725 subscribers to our software. We are at 3,000 right now. Yes. So the goal for December was 725 and now we're at 3,000 and it's only May. June, pardon me, we just had fajitas. So this is a commitment I have we have three full-time developers. We just started the, the app today. Um, we have a lot of stuff. I wrote in the Patreon and in Discord, our time schedule for everything. I am definitely under-promising and over-delivering like we like to do because I realize in the software world how much I hate it when people are like, yeah, this software will be done in a week and then eight weeks later, it's, it's, it's um, 
it's not going to work. So yeah, yeah. So I just we just I just saw the bill in person. Over two hundred thousand dollars. Paul's paying to have the software for the next two years for the patrons. So we hope you're enjoying the Everything Money software as part of our Patreon. And by the way, that's not even all the software. That's just part of the software. That's that bill for only part of the software. That's the thing. Like it's it's not just that. So yeah. anyhow, um, it just goes to show the commitment to what we have the software long term. Uh, we want it to be your go to source for everything financial, and uh, it'll take some time. But we, you know, somebody wrote. Your day when I commented about all of our timeline, they go, I get all of this for $23 a month. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> They're like, this is like the best deal out there. I introduced you Trader Mo, the handsome Egyptian you all know. Uh, uh, Dr. Bidnask in his morning show, he there. handles the middle Patreon <clears throat> tier, the Bidnask Nation with the yep. trades. And Mo, uh, people are real fired up about the employee trader. You're yeah. going to pick five stocks for average Joes like me. Yeah. I'm ready with my money. I've learned my stochastics. I know the trends. My child has been reading the, the, the Geo, the amazing 11 year old investor has been reading the charts. It's easy enough a kid could do it, and we're excited. I, I announced the five today. In the bid and ask? Yeah. Here oh, we go. you did? What were they? Well, you can't, you can't tell, oh, Paul. That's the key. That's it's right. in the bid and ask. So, that's the caveat. So we'll be, we'll be buying those this week, and we're very excited. So here we go, guys. We thank you all. Oh, and my wife is here, too. Mo, everyone does love you in that blue shirt. Look how shredded you are with thank the little uh, muscles and all that thank stuff. Thank you. Um, make sure you guys tickle the thumbs up if you like the show, and we're going to get right into it. We're going to use our eight pillar analysis to look at the financial fundamentals of a company, the health of a company, not the stock ticker. Paul, we did, a, we did a video a few days ago about you're not buying a ticker, you're buying a company. So if you're new to this, again, I think from my investing career for a decade, I thought that I'm, I'm buying just a ticker price. So when, when Chipotle was X amount of dollars on a ticker, I wanted to just go up. But what are the fun, fundamentals behind these prices? We're gonna do that right now, and we're gonna start with Nissan, Company Nissan, the ticker symbol is, let's get after N-S-A-N-Y, and I'm going to Y charts here because I just signed up for foreign stocks, so we don't have it yet. So Seth, I'm gonna need your help here on the free cash flow portion. Sure, special thanks to Trapper Esner for his donation, which is going this week to the Innocence Project. Let's start with Nissan, Paul. Market cap, baby. Market cap, $20 billion. Now guys, remember, this is a company that in the last year has struggled. Why? Because COVID a year ago, there was a lot of restructuring, a lot of bad sales, et cetera. So they have no net income, it's negative. So the PE is an X because there's no PE and the profit margin is an X because it's garbage right now. So it's pretty terrible overall. Um, two X's to start. This is a company that we don't wanna look exactly at the current numbers. You wanna take out the current numbers and factor in different kind of, th more of a stabilized form of the, for the company. Yes, Paul, as a normal person, I always bring up the idea that there's this thin line of we want these X's to buy in, but we also want to catch a company that's undervalued and maybe has a brighter future, not so much growth future, but a brighter future. So, and this is why I love our software more than Y charts. I'm trying to do four quarters at a time. I can't do that here. It's only going to take me to write right after COVID started. So we're going to have to do a couple of manipulations here. So in the last 101 billion down to 90 billion, that's an X, but in the last 12 months, their 90 billion in revenue was actually got down to 72 billion. So their revenue is down a ton in the last year. Okay, profit from a profit of 4.4 billion down to a loss of 6.2 billion, another X, and shares outstanding, Uncle Seth. It's actually a check mark here. 2.095 down to 1.956. Well, actually, but wait a second. Let's go look at what currently has, let's go see their current trailing 12 months. Okay, but we? Oh, wait, I have to go to, I have to, go to quarterly. So they currently have... Yeah, still the same thing. They're good. It's still a check mark on the shares outstanding. Now, balance sheet, guys, cash on hand. It's inventory and basically things can be turned to cash very quickly. $93 billion, $98 billion, and total current liability is $63 billion. Plenty of check there. One thing I do like, guys, they only have 116 in total liabilities. That's pretty incredible. So they have $98 billion in current assets. That's very rare for a car company to be that close. So I like this. I like that part very much. Now, Seth, are you can help me for the cash flow. I'm gonna mess this up, but sure, go ahead. Okay, so five years ago, oh my lordy, there's like no free cash flow in this business. This sucks, donkey nuts. I mean, their free cash flow is terrible. Look at this free cash flow, guys. Ready? It's from a negative, negative, three point eight billion to a positive 0.7 billion. And then 0.4, negative, okay, the average is negative. 
So guys, they have no free cash flow. I, you know, I look at this going, one of the questions that they ask is, why do they have no free cash flow over the last five years? It's an X on the free cash flow. It's, an, it's a check mark on the growth. No, sorry. Yeah, it's a check mark on the growth, but they have no free cash flow over the last five years. This is what you use to buy businesses, pay down debt, pay out dividends, buy back shares. I don't understand how a business operates with no free cash flow unless you look at your capital expenditures, but it's pretty consistently high. So capital expenditures are one of two things, maintenance and growth. For example, if they're building a new factory as part of a way to sell more cars, that's a growth capital expenditure. If they're redoing an entire line within a current factory, so that they can keep making the same cards they have, that's a maintenance capital expenditure. You should only punish a company for their maintenance capital expenditure, not for their growth capital expenditure. But I look back at their history, and I see a pretty high capital expense number every single year. So I have a hard time believing every year they're doing growth capital expenditures. So my personal opinion is, uh, find a different company. There's no free cash flow here. I, don't, I, I like to operate on free cash flow. But they've had zero, they've had negative free cash flow in the last five years. I don't even like, I don't understand why. More people trading Nissan. So this is one of those foreign companies, uh, five tickers that I don't like doing. Um, but I'm going to give you a general overview from what I'm seeing. So if I just draw a line across here, you are facing, you're, you're really just, this is going back three months and you're just kind of consolidating in this area with a little bit of peaks outside of that consolidation zone. So to me, I look at it and say, there's a lot of resistance A here and B at 1150. So <clears throat> I'm personally gonna go find something else. I mean, I know this is in the United States, but you can go and find a lot better companies than something like this to go and trade. The, the volume is probably, the volume is very up and down. You have a lot of resistance in a lot of places. To me, go find something else and you're gonna be better off for it. All right, that's our take on Nissan. Uh, we're avoiding at the moment. But uh, we appreciate you know, somebody asked, like somebody in here wrote, maybe they were talking about a different company. They said their free cash flow per share of four dollars. But I look at their so guys, any given year can show this is why I like look, looking at multiple years at a time. Because one year can have a really great number, a really bad number for some fluke reason. If I look at five years and go, man, they had no free cash flow over a five year period of time when car sales were increasing and the economy was getting better and better and better, like that's just confusing to me. Like, how can that be? Now, there could be a very logical answer to it in their financials, or if you call the company to say, well, we also built blah, blah, blah factories, we're, we're, we're going to create electric cars, all the and there might be a very logical reason, but then you look at their capital expenditures and say, if their capital expenditures had jumped up a lot, I would buy into that, but it seemed pretty much in line with regular growth for them, so that's why I'm a little hesitant on them. I would say that Turbo Flapper is just the greatest YouTube name. I mean, I just love that. <laughs> it's just brilliant, brilliant name. Um, all right, let's let's keep going. What's the next stock? The next stock is the ticker symbol is G R F S. This is Griffles Pharmaceutical. It's a Spanish multinational pharmaceutical and chemical manufacturer based out of Barcelona, Spain. Paul, you know where Barcelona? is? I do know is. where Barcelona is. And, uh, and it's a European le leader and largest worldwide. It supplies devices, instruments, and reagents for clinical testing laboratories. This oh, is so they make they make actual devices, not. As well, yeah. Oh, they make both. Um, blood plasma-based products. That's, okay. Yep. Well, guys, they have a $12 billion market cap, PE of 16, check mark, and a profit margin of 11.58. Check mark there. They have a nice little dividend here of 1.2%, paying out $145 million a year. Remember, guys, this matters because what you want to do is make sure that dividend is actually supported by the cash flow in the business because if it's not... That's a problem for us. So two checks so far. Let's go to their income statement. Last last Ni five years. Nyan says, big love from the UK, Paul. You guys kill it and have completely changed my perception of investing. That's that's what happened for me. And I'm glad I'm glad we're helping you guys out there. Keep going, Paul. Uh, very, look at this, Seth. Very consistent growth in the last 10 years. 4.95 to 6.53. Check mark nice. there. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. And literally growth every single year. Yep. Net income, guys. 667 to 756, check, check mark there. Check so income's up a lot more, sorry, revenue's up a lot more than income. Always questioning why that is. There's probably a, a reason why, but I'm always wondering why that is. Four straight checks, we're headed to shares outstanding, pillar number oh, five, what baby? X, 668 to 690. Now, the good news is, well, there is no good news. Actually, there's good news. 
They hit a peak of 703 in 2018, and they're down from there. So that's the good news. Let me slow you down. If you guys notice on the show, Paul always says the good news, and it's transferring into my life, Paul. Oh. This idea, folks, if just a small tidbit for you is if you can, every problem that comes across your desk, Paul, even in normal conversations, you always turn it around to the good news. Well, the funny part is because of investing, I think the, the point of investing is to actually find the bad news and, 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 and stop investing in the thing. But here, you know, I, I saw that going, it's all part of the story. You want to sit there and say, where is the trend going? The five-year trend is the shares are up. The three-year trend is it's down. So they might have started a, it's, it's a good question to sit there and say, okay, well, what was their plan? Did they initiate a plan in 2018? But overall, in general, in terms of how you should live your life, which by the way, in our Patreon, we have a mindset chat now because part of this channel will be mindset. I just believe in problems that are there to be solved. And the person who solves the most problems does the best in life, whether it's personally, professionally, whatever it is, when you solve problems, life becomes better in my opinion. Yeah, you know, you, you talk about the idea of when the market's down, uh, there's just, I don't know, just this mindset of the good news. I mean, you, you just approach problems with the idea of, well, the good news is we can overcome this and keep going and strengthen us. It's just a great way to live, guys. I'm starting to implement it in my life. And it really turns bad situations sort of in, in, in instantly into, into better ones because you start thinking good news. Joyce, thank you so much for your donation. Everyone's donations, we appreciate the donations. Today are going to, again, Paul Martin, The Innocence Project. The Innocence Project. Paul. And I did not get Matt chess goals started on stoicism. He always bragged about being stoic. I once went off about something and he was like, Paul, be stoic. He's adorable. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Getting back to Griffles, this is the ticker symbol GRFS. We're on to pillar number six, which is current assets over liabilities, Paul. 3.9 billion versus 1.63. Check, please. Definite check mark there. A lot of, a lot of debt, 10.46. That seems like a lot for a company with the revenue that it has of six point, eh, maybe not, I don't know. We welcome Steph to the Bid Nest Nation. He joined today. Steph Curry? Apparently that he's here, yes. I mean, he's fresh off of getting knocked out of the playoffs and he wants to invest his money, so he's here. He's probably gonna make a billion dollars in the next 20 years anyhow. Greetings from Lithuania. You guys are awesome, thanks so much. Uh, Paul, we're on to free cash flow growth for this uh Now your trusty 80 company. cents a day software. We added the line for free cash flow, 318 and 914, check, check mark. Yes. Now guys, remember, remember. <laughs> Well, let's go to this one. The average is 516. 516 times 20 is $10.3 billion. What was the market cap again? What did you say? 10.3? The market cap is 12. Sorry. Okay. So it's not far off, but... So it's an X still, but guys, look at this. Look at their last five years. 318, 634, 525, 191, 914. But look at... I mean, look at... It's all over the board. They're free. So all the more reason when it's all over the board to look at longer periods of time of their free cash flow. So I definitely think for this company, you want to look at the five or seven year free cash flow number, which ironically is probably about 500 million over the last seven years also. Yeah. So I think this company, even though it's selling for 16 times PE, seems cheap. It seems normal. I still think it's an expensive stock. I'd probably be a buyer of the stock. What's that right now? It's currently at $17.30. Its highest it's ever been is, is uh, around 23, 24. Their ROI, the return on invested capital return on assets is not very high. So that makes me apprehensive about paying a premium for it. So I'd probably want to pay a third less. I know it sounds like a lot, $12 a share. So I'd look at this company going, okay, unless there's major growth potential, which I would sit there and argue that there is no growth. I mean, look at this growth. It's not very high. What's four point? I mean, this is, this is a 20, this is a 30% growth over five. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's not it's a huge number. It's, it's, it's in the mid single digits. So you've got paying for growth here, but they, if they're buying back shares and continue to do so, they have plenty of money on hand to pay their dividend. Their dividend is 150 million a year. They generate an average of 520 million or $500 million a year in free cash flow. So it's fully supported there. Um, I would just be a buyer at a much lower number. Of course, like most things. Yeah, it hasn't reached that price since like 2013, but it certainly could happen. Well, let's do this. Remember what we did today in one of the videos? Go ahead. Guys, I'm just gonna show what we plan on doing in a very simple way on our stock analyzer tool, which is being built right now. We think about discounted free cash flow. At the end of the day, all that matters is what's your free cash, what's your cash gonna be in your pocket in an investment? It's the present value of all future cash flow. So let's put it in here right now. 
Right now, the company is going to sell for $12 billion. So minus 12. We're going to call that billions. Every year, let's say it makes $500 billion and grows by 5% a year. And in the very last year, it sells for 15 times free cash flow. If you pay $12 billion for it, you're going to get 2.1% return on your money. That's it. That's all. That's, it's just numbers, guys. So if you paid seven billion, like I said, you get eleven point eight percent. It's all based on your assumptions. They're growing at half a percent. Per, they're growing at five or six percent a year. You start at half a billion. You grow up by five or six percent a year. And at the end of the day, you sell for fifteen times free cash flow. Now. Can you sell for a higher times free cash flow? Sure, but I looked at going, why would you pay a premium for a slow growing company? It's just math. And that part of our software, and they, they buy back a lot of shares. If their buyback's really high, it could end up getting a higher price. But paying $7 billion for the company versus 12, look at that difference. 7 billion, 11.8% return. 12 billion, 2.1% return. That's it. It's just numbers, it's all assumptions. And in our software, you'll be able to put your assumptions in and it'll spit out what you should pay for the company today or what your return will be if you bought it today. Mo, are people trading this? What are you doing over there with all these red lines all over the place? Huh. Is this the last stock? Pardon me? What do you got up there? Yeah, oh, this is, yeah, yeah, this is, this is the last stock. Good call. Okay, so um, I don't know. I'm looking at it, and I'm just looking at where it's at right now, and I'm just going to draw a line from here straight across. You can see that it hit a resistance point here, a support point here, it hit a support point here, and it's just kind of doing the same thing where, of the last stock. It's just consolidating in this area. So if you want to go short on it, which actually today it's setting up to be a pretty nice short, you've moved into the sweet spot going down. Eh, it's, your, your price has moved a little bit on you. So this is not an ideal engulfing candlestick. You want a full engulfing candlestick. You don't want a wick like that on top. But if you get that tomorrow, you can probably, if you get a red engulfing candlestick moving down like so, I think you'll have room to run on this until, I don't know, $15 or something. But again, I look at this saying, that's, not, that's, that's a lot of risk for a little bit of reward. So to me, I say, go and find one of the other 10,000 stocks out there. It's just, it, it's, this is too tight of a range for you guys to go ahead and try to make money on. That's my point on this one. Okay, that's our take, Paul. I thought you'd be a little more excited about this one. We had some initial checks off the bat. This I did too, to be well, honest. Well, it's such a low PE, but guys, that's why I brought the Excel sheet out. It's just money in, money out. That's all you're looking at with any investment. We just always mask it differently because we see stocks going up and down, but every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. That's it. You pick a growth rate, you pick a multiple, you pick a buy price, and you go from there. If they're able to increase their free cash flow on average by 5% a year for the next seven years, and then you sell it for 15 times free cash flow in the year seven, if you pay $12 billion for it today, you make 2.1%. If you pay $7 billion, you make 118 It's just math. And it's logical that the less you pay, the more return you get. That's it. Paul, we see people all over the world. It's really astounding. I just can't believe the greetings from Sweden, greetings from the Netherlands, um, Lithuania. You guys are just, it's incredible that we're reaching so many folks. It's great to see you in the chat. Um, other people are, are thanking us for opening their eyes up to um, Turtle Beach, ticker symbol here. Um, my, my, we've loved that since the get-go, and you loved it again. We've done a couple of videos on it. Um, we also have, we're going to get to Paul's shorts check recently. My shorts are getting, I mean, listen, my shorts are the same shorts all the time. Yeah, but you got to wear those loud ones back. You get the louder ones. You're going to order louder shorts, and we'll have, well, we're going to have everything money shorts with your face all over the crotch oh, and adorable. buttocks region. Um, <laughs> hey, Tate, I see you guys there. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going. Uh, Caesar was kind enough to donate toward the innocent. Uh, our take, we taking donations today. He was kind enough to donate to. He wanted to see the ticker symbol is S G U, S G U. This is Star Group. Look at our logo. So I just reported the bug. It's a Starbucks logo. That's not the real logo. So that's been. Uh, Tim told me today we've had a lot of logo problems. I love the fact that it's just logo problems now. Most of the most part, this is yeah. great. Star Group is out of Stamford, Connecticut. Um, their subsidiaries are Petroleum Heat and Power and a Meenan Oil Company. There's more. I, I don't know much about this. We just got asked to do this stock, so we'll take a look. at. Obviously, they're involved in oil. All right. $422 million market cap, 5 PE, check mark there. Profit margin is low, 6%. That's an X. Um, big dividend, though. 5% dividend that costs them $21 million a year. Look at this, Seth. Return on assets of 9.4% and return on invested capital of 14.4%. Very, very high levels. Yep.
This is energy-based, which I tend to avoid because of the fluctuations in energy prices. So all the more reason to look at it over long periods of time, okay? Pillar number three is revenue growth over the past five years. Barely a check. 1.3 to 1.39. Check mark barely, and the trend is actually decreasing. Look at that. So it is decreasing trend. Boy, look at these revenues over the last, I mean, look at the last 10 years. It's down from the last 10 years. So I want to figure out why is it down over the last 10 years? Is it merely because of um, natural gas prices and oil prices? I don't know. If you guys, we rarely ask, but make sure you guys fondle that thumbs up like you're tickling Paul's little white belly and buttocks. He really like, enjoys that. To be tick you like to be tickled while making love, I assume? <laughs> Only by your wife. Pillar number four is profit growth over the past five years. So this is weird. The revenue is down, but the profit is massively up. $31.4 million to $84 million. So it is a check mark there. But um, shares outstanding, down significantly. 55.9 down to $40 million. That's a check mark there. So, so far, this is why energy is confusing for me. Uh, massive fluctuations in revenue and profit. It's just... <sighs> Okay, current assets over current liabilities. 307 million versus 366. That's an X, kids. That's an X on the ca cash on hand versus liabilities. X. My wife is watching Paul and uh, Beth. I, I, I think you think Paul's very handsome, right? You'd probably, um, <laughs> you, you'd probably um, mess around with him, wouldn't you, at some point? I mean, oh, he's, I mean he's been working on his arms and you see his legs. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I don't You're, know what's happening. I'm sure she's she's not like opposed to it. You're not an ugly guy. <laughs> I mean, you're no Mo. Look at this guy. He's oh, just a, you. He's just a statue of David over there, <laughs> an, an Egyptian David, but uh -huh. David nonetheless. So. They're both Mediterranean. <laughs> Mediterranean. Mediterranean, right? I love that food. Yeah. Um, okay, what the hell are we doing? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Ready? Beth, call me, or is it like this? Call me. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay. What are we doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. So cash. Free cash flow, baby. Let's do All it. All right. So here's the free cash flow, guys. This is weird. Negative 20 million to 115 million. Check mark there. And an average of $78 million a year. 78 times 20 is 1.56 billion. Market cap is 422 million. Okay. So, all right. This is interesting because here's why it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Seth, can you pull out your calculator for me? Oh, this is where the show goes south, but okay. Oh my lord. There's so much free cash flow in this business. Hmm. So here's what I'm looking at, Sethi. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the previous five years and the five years before then. And the five years before then were even bigger free cash flow numbers. Man, this is weird. That's four, that's um 400, 500, 530. Oh man. So their, their free cash flow is declining over a 10-year period in terms of the five-year... This is interesting. So, guys, this thing is selling for six times free cash flow right now. This one's got you stumped, huh? Yeah, and here's why. Um, let's pull up our sheet. You're going to pay $450 billion for the company. I love this sheet. And every... By the way, this is going to be even better every year. Every year, it's going to be... Let's call it, it's going to start at 78. And I mean, if this happened, look at your return. Oh, sorry. 0.078. I mean, it's a 32% return a year if you can sell the company for 15 times free cash flow in year seven. So, from the number standpoint, it shows us a screaming deal. And we're going to do, when we have the, um, the stock analyzer tool, it'll basically do this, but it'll also factor in shares outstanding. That's the important part of everything is showing if shares are going up or down, because that's the secret killer that people don't realize. The more shares issued, the more you're sharing your profit with, the less share if you, uh, shares issued, and the more shares bought back, you'll be doing better. So if they just keep their shares the same, and they generate this kind of cash flow, you're gonna get a 32% return on their money, assuming you sell for 15 times free cash flow in year. Let's look at um, free cash flow multiple. Let's do this. Let's create this. <laughs> Let's say the multiple goes down to seven. You're still gonna make, if they only sell for seven times free cash flow in year, whatever, you're still gonna make a ton of money. You are still going to make a ton of money. You're still gonna make 23% return on your money. So I guess my comment is, if you believe 
that their free cash flow is going to stay the same and get up, get better by 5% a year. Even if it gets, let's do it this way. I'm actually going to, I'm basically making a free cash flow multiple, free cash flow, um, growth of free cash flow. Ready? Percent five here, here. Boy, the silence is killing me. Yeah. I should fill it with something hilarious. God, you're going to be able to do that. So there you go. Look at free cash flow. Make it 0% growth. You're still getting 19% return on your money. Let's say they lose 5% a year. You're still making 14.8% of your money. So guys, I'm sitting there assuming their free cash flow decreases by 5% a year, and they're only going to sell for seven times free cash flow in the future. You can still make 14.8% of your money. I mean... What's the reason we don't like this? You tell energy? us, baby. I mean, it's just energy. That's the thing yeah, I just don't like that. about it. Energy fluctuates so much. But again, I'm making pretty reasonable assumptions here. Uh, I mean, you have to go do, I mean, of course, everything's about doing more research. But I'm looking at this saying, assuming 5% decline in free cash flow, and you only sell for seven times free cash flow in the future, you're still going to make 14.8% return on your money per year, buying today and waiting seven years. Uh, Caesar, if you're still on, uh, he queued up the donation today to see this stock. Let us know how you came across this, where you learned about it, what you love about it. Maybe we're missing something. Um, yes, and uh, we welcome Gabe Etch. Uh, one of, it's, this is real. Matt's, Matt, I don't know if he's trolling me or being funny, but yes, Gabe Etch. I'll be a hello from the Everything Money team. Mo, Mo's your name, right? Are they trading this <laughs> SGU? Are they trading this? What's going on over here? Let me look at this. I don't, I don't like where this is headed. It's headed down. I actually kind of do. Oh, go uh, on. So Sorry. the reason is I'm looking at the stochastic down here. You see how these red, the red line and the yellow line are starting to converge? Okay. That means that this red line is going to soon be heading towards the sweet spot, and the yellow line is going to trail and follow. So to me, I say this is going to be a resistance point at $11 and, I don't know, 35 cents. But if we can get green engulfing candlesticks moving up, and then get some true volume and push through that, you might be able to do something with this. But it all comes down to this. You can't, you can't get into it now. You're going to be way too early if you try to jump in because you're, you're not in the sweet spot yet. But keep a watch if you want to. Keep a watch on that, um, on that stochastic for it to roll up. But again, I, I don't know. What, everything that we're picking today has very low volume. Doesn't, it's it, hard resistance point. So again, this is another one where... Hey, Mo, do you have a hard down. resistance point? Yeah, Paul, we talked about that... 5% dividend for this company too. So I mean, here's the deal though. You can't factor that into a discounted cash flow analysis when you're looking at their company cash flow. Because remember, dividend comes out of your free cash flow. So if you add the dividend into it also as a return, you're double dipping on the free cash flow because you take the free cash flow to pay the dividend out. So if you take the free cash flow, don't subtract the dividend and then add a dividend in as an extra cash flow, you're double counting. Uh, Mo uh, Andreas is saying, "What time frame does Mo use for his stochastic? Is he talking? Uh, is is it the stochastic or stochastic RSI? This thirty-two and eighty percent? Yeah. So this one is this is my week. This is my weekly chart. So this is my weekly stochastic, and then I, I have my daily one, which is day-to-day -day stochastic. So it just moves a little bit quicker. And then, of course, on your fifteen-minute chart, you're using a fifteen-minute stochastic. So all of these are just trending in different time frames. That's all. That's all this is. Okay, that's our take. Uh, we have another donation. Read." Donated just for the sake of it. We appreciate that. He pledged allegiances to the bid NAS. That's a little that's a little much on Memorial Day, but I love you. <laughs> Ryan DeLong, my long lost uh my oh, Ryan. stepson. Now this is funny, folks. Ryan DeLong, Ryan has been a huge follower of ours, and every other day he says, I'm getting my Tesla in blank subscribers. But he's talking so much, Paul. If he actually wins, it'll look like he's we've thrown the whole contest. If Ryan DeLong, so Ryan, get your color ready and we'll get ready for a lawsuit if you actually win this thing. <laughs> So, uh, but the Tesla is coming at 50,000 subscribers and, uh, we're getting a lot of you every day, a hundred, uh, four or 500 a day. So it should what's be happening. Uh, what's the next stack while you talk? Yeah, sure. The next stack is from Ryan and you're going to love this, Paul. The ticker symbol is S B H. This is Sally's beauty. Paul, I know you're oh, in there on a, oh, on a weekly on basis. This. You love Sally's. Paul gets the hair lubricants. We loved the stock a he, year ago. He waxes have... most of his body, uh, with, with, with Sally's products. You do, I have a lot, of, I have a lot of options on this right now. Oh, okay. Do tell. Yeah, I have uh, I have puts on this thing, but man, I think they're like ten dollars and seven dollars and fifty. Yeah, we're not going to get. Uh, you so. probably you're probably up ninety eight percent of yeah, those. Yeah. So Sally's Beauty is an American international special distributor of professional beauty supplies. They do Paul, you know all about them. They got the hair stuff, primarily women, I think. But my they, you know, extensions are from Sally's. Yeah, where are you putting those extensions? <laughs> That's the real question. Yeah, Paul gets his, his hair beads, beaded hair, and uh, you know, like when you go on vacation. <laughs> 
when you go down to like uh, Myrtle Beach, you get the hair beads. Paul wears so they're in the back. You can't see them. But how about that office episode where he goes to Jamaica and he comes back with the uh, <laughs> the beads? <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you know, I had a I had a pigtail for a majority of my my young life, Paul. Oh, business I have, business, I have business, a little bit of pigtail. Front no, no, party no, in the back. You're not. You're not. You're no, not you had a real pigtail. Like, like a curly like three, a rat four tail? inch rat tail. That's what it was called. Rat tail. Uh, my parents, the, folks, this is 1986, so. Um, you know, the trending was different back then. I'm sure it'll come back. I mean, mullets are back big time, Paul. Now, I mean, big time. I will have best men, 26 year old men, stand up. Their their bankers full mullet. I mean, just full McGillicuddy, shaving the sides. It's real now. It's it's they're back. And are man buns still a thing? Oh yeah, that's that's huge. Of course, my my wife wants me to grow one of those. All right, let's get back to you. You grow a man bun, you're fired. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Listen, I will say this about man buns. Forget. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I'm going to anyhow. Uh oh, no, no, I no, let's literally not. We get in trouble can't when you do this. Take anybody seriously who has a man bun. Did you just turn him down? <laughs> no, I didn't. literally cannot take you seriously with a man bun. We we had a guy at Paramount Tennis. Reef agrees with me, right, Reef? We were at Paramount Tennis in Medina. There was a kid who worked the front desk. He had a man bun. I literally looked at him with such disdain. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I wanted to kill the kid. He cut it one day. He looked like he was 10 years old. I'm like. I respect this man. Literally like that. And I told my tennis coach, I go, Sean, I could not respect him before. Now I respect him. He looks like a 12 year old now, 10 year old, but I respect him now. The man bun to me is just ridiculous. I don't remember his name. A message from That's the, the desk. That's the proof. I didn't even want to know his name. A message from the desk with Paul Gabriel. Okay, let's get into Sally's beauty supply. Let's get after Paul. Use the eight pillars and let's get after All right. $2.5 billion market cap, 17 PE check mark. Low profit margin, 4%. That's an X. But guys, look at this gross margin, 50%. That's pretty incredible. No dividends being paid. Um, um, a low return on assets, but a high return on invested capital. Okay, so we have things to look at here. It's not, nothing's jumping out at me as bad or good right now. Revenue growth over the past five years, Paul? Um, okay, ready? 3.94 to 3.53. That's an X. Oh, whoops. Now, remember, it's, it's, this is COVID year. This ended. On, I'm not worried about this one. I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about this lack of growth. I'm not worried about the X here. Okay, so either way, profit two, growth two thirty three down to one forty two. That's an X as well. But again, guys, they're a very specialty store. You know what I mean? I'm not worried about that. Shares out. Oh my God, shares outstanding. I love it. One forty down to one twelve, and they're buying shares back in the COVID and during COVID. Another check mark there. Did anyone see how excited Paul just got there? It's like you like. I it's like you just won a, a tic tac toe tic tac toe game against a five year old. You're just squealing like a little. <laughs> I would never play a five year old in tic tac toe. You love shares like standing. All right, 1.47 billion in current assets, 875 in current liabilities. Check mark there. Now for my big man pajama, the free cash flow. Okay, now take it in now. We have 174 to 416. Jeez. Now this 416 is very skewed. Look at that. Your change in working capital was a big jump. We're seeing that a lot lately because of COVID. So it goes 174, 284, 200, 153, then all the way up to four something. So I'm actually going to strike out this year. And I'm going to say one. This, these are more important years. So minus 200 divided by five is 40. I'm going to say the average is 200, 200 million dollars a year in free cash flow. Even though it's still a check, 200 million dollars a year in free cash flow. The 254 times 20, I'm still gonna do that's $5 billion. What's the market cap? Two and a half. Okay, check mark there. Even here, we're at 12 times free cash flow. Okay, so it's still 12 times free cash flow the last five years. Man, guys, and they're buying shares back. So, this is a retailer. The most important part of this business is to understand are they opening new locations? I would be apprehensive if they are. Why? Unless they really believe that Sally Buse, that, go look at their. 10k they will discuss they should discuss who their ideal customer is and find out if that customer is going into the store for a specific reason versus going online i believe sally beauty supply has their own line of uh, products that are exclusive to them if they have that and they're very unique that's where you want to be in the retail world what are we laughing about kids nothing just... what we want to be in the retail world is everything retail related your only question should be how much they sell on the internet versus in their retail stores. You want to understand that completely. Because from every standpoint here, let's put in our trusty little free cash flow number, negative 2.5 billion. Free cash flow of, what do we say, 200 million? 
210. Yeah. And we're going to grow it by just 3% a year, and they're going to sell for 12 times in the future. It's probably priced to where you want it to be. We got some bangers. Assuming today. they don't even buy back more shares, and they're buying back more shares. So it could be good at this price. But you just got to understand where, what's the future of their business retail versus internet retail? Brick and mortar versus internet. They might be able to grow bigger if they go to like an, I don't even know, I don't know anything about the business. I don't know. We read the 10K last year. We read year. the 10K and we talked to Natalie. That's all we, that's all and we And Natalie have. liked their stuff. What is what so the funny? What's happening? <laughs> I've never heard Tim laugh this loud ever. Um, oh, I appreciate Paul's consistency, that one. Mamma Jamma. Yeah. Oh, geez. Folks, we have quite a quite a following of, of loving people that really love us and the show. And so if you're new... I do like Matthew Jones's comment. I appreciate Paul's consistency from head to toe. Paul recommends cutting it off. <laughs> We're going back to circumcision. We're going jokes. back to circumcision. Yeah. Um, just, there's a lot of in, uh, innuendos with the show. We, 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 I wholeheartedly believe this is a comedy show based around real estate. But um, that's why there's so much laughter and, so, and, and, and BS. To get back to Sally Beauty Supply... If you had 30 companies that had exactly these attributes that you could buy at these levels and they're buying shares back, I would be a buyer of this company. In terms of making a specific bet in this company, you got to do more research. But if you had 30 companies like this, you're going to do well because they're buying shares back too. So this, this number will go higher as they buy. This assumes the shares stay the same over the next seven years. And we, when we asked um, our, Natalie, our friend's wife, during, in the midst of COVID, and she was like, yeah, people are still in stores. All of, all of her, how many people are at Fix? 17. She said all of them are still going there, using it, buying online. We own this, a salon. We yeah. own a salon studio. So this was during COVID. This was still happening. Yeah, this, we own a salon studio. What that means is we have a space with 17 individual offices for the, for the girls to rent from us, and they run their own salon out of there. We liked what we heard about it. Yeah. That was our, that was our, real reason, that was our final reasoning of why we went and sold puts on it is because of that. After reading the 10K. So yep. I remember we were okay with it. I mean, this is pretty good, guys. Yeah. This should make you feel better. This assumes they keep their shares outstanding. So go look at their, their growth. I mean, you don't need growth. That's the thing. You don't even need growth. Let's do this. Let's say it's zero and eight times free cash flow. It drops a lot to four and a half percent here. But what are the chances they have zero growth yeah. and zero free cash? And they sell for eight times free cash right. in the future. That's an extremely conservative. Those are very conservative numbers. Yeah. And you're still showing you're still a gain here. Right. Okay. This is all investing is, guys. Yeah. You're making your assumptions. These are very off-the-cuff assumptions because and, we're here. And not everything has to be an insane assumption. It doesn't, and not everything needs to have massive, massive, incredible growth. So, I anyhow, like buying the shares back, that's why it's important because... Our discount cash flow model will factor in shares outstanding. So it'll show you, hey, even if free cash flow stays the same, if they're decreasing the number of shares outstanding, you're getting an increase in the free cash flow attributed to your shares. And that alone is like free cash flow growth. And it's more efficient than paying dividends. Mo, um, Susie's being adamant she does need massive growth. Let's head over to trading, <laughs> Mo. People are, what, are people trading Sally's Beauty? What's going on with that? I actually kind of like this. So it gapped up. I'm assuming this is probably earnings. Uh, yeah, it probably was based on their next earnings date. And then, of course, the gap filled. So the gap is filled. I can't wait to see where they go with that. Um, and <laughs> so we have a downtrend. So I'm, what I'm looking for is this thing's just going to keep coming down. And I think we're going it, to – it's at a resistance point. So I don't think it's going to drop very much below that. Eventually, let's wait for this red line to turn up and get some green engulfing candlesticks and maybe make some new all-time highs. I'm going to throw this on a watch list. So if you're in the Bidden Ask Nation, please put this in the Discord chat. Tag me. It's going on the watch list. I Paul, like it. Paul, I assume you're a grower, not a shower. <laughs> I like what Bogdan said, by the way. He said, he said growth. He's like, uh, girth greater than growth. <laughs> We're a girth channel. What the hell is happening? <laughs> We're a girth stock channel, Mo. You know, the swing trades, swing. Okay, that is our take on Sally. I love how you didn't get that last time. You're like, it's a show wing. What'd you say? <laughs> I get it, bro. Oh, you got it? I had to explain Wayne's world to this small child next to me who's running the boards. We should get Nate on camera today just to show everyone. I don't think you got it last time. I was just like, beauty. Wayne's world, like, swing. You're like, oh, that's right. No, no, I know. I'm swinging right now as, as we speak. Okay, everything. All right, what's the next okay. stock? The next stock is brought to you in part by, who? Uh, uh, oh, the, the draw, draw, draw. Give the, me a ticker. The ticker symbol is PHM. The draw oh. cab gave a $50 oh, Pulte? donation Pulte. to see PHM. This is Pulte Group Home Construction Company. Okay, first off, off the dribble, guys, 
They are in the most, one of the most booming real estate markets in history, second only to 2005, 2006. Oh, this is why we're gonna be cautious with our, with our, with our analyzer. I wanna look back at the shares because we now have data going back to 1987, I believe, on our stocks. Tim, he's looking at you. 1987, I think, is our data going back now. So we're going to be able to look at how things went during the 06 crash. Okay, so $15 billion company, 10 PE, check mark, 13% profit margin, check mark. Two check marks so far. Look at this adorable little dividend of 0.9%. Hey, Pulte, keep your effing money. $138 million they're paying out. Um, 13% return on assets, pretty solid. Let's go to the income statement. Revenue, revenue growth is revenue growth over the past five years. 7.87, 11.47. Check, Check mark there. Check please. Profit growth over the last five years. Okay. 6.10 to 1.5. Check mark there. Yep. Four straight, baby. Shares outstanding. What do you think they're doing selling? No, they're buying back. Check. 318 out of 265. Check mark there. <laughs> this is great, guys. So oh, far, so good. Five straight. This is, by the way, I will be fully transparent. Home builders is the one that Mo and I have been like, it's hard. they scream value, oh. but I have a hard time believing there are value plays in one of the most booming real estate markets in history. It's just hard for me to grasp that concept. But let's go to the next one, balance sheet. We spent a lot of time on home builders back in the end of last year, just looking for, I mean, they do scream value, but I don't know. $10 billion in current assets, 2.3 in current liabilities, total liabilities, 4.7. So they have $6 billion extra. Guys, they were a 15, so they're basically a $9 billion company because they're selling for 15 billion, but if you sell all their assets, pay off all their debt, it's basically a $9 billion company. They now granted, those with... assets are inventory, which means they're houses. Oh. This is still good though. Are you are you saying we should shift the, mar the uh, market cap down? Yeah, we need to shift the market cap down to oh, yeah. 10 or $11 billion from 15. All right, I'll put it on the high side. Okay, great. Wow. Free cash flow over the last- uh, Six straight checks? Yep, and Free make it seven. Run. Oh my lord. Uh, 131 to 1 1.7 billion. That's a check mark. The average is about 900 million times 20 is $18 billion. Check mark there. Okay. These are all uh, eight checks, aren't they? That was what we were seeing with all, pretty much all of the home buildings. All eight. Though. Now, now we, here's, what we do, we here's the down. question of all questions, Paul, is people don't know how to translate, including yeah. myself at times, Mo, you know yeah. this. How do we translate? We found a company. All eight checks are met. We've come up with a potential market cap of what, Paul? Nine, uh, eight, eight? 18. It's 18 billion. 18 billion. We'd love to pay what we think 18 billion, and we have a current we know, We'd love to pay that. Our so, multiple of 20 says we should pay $18 billion to the company. So eight. go ahead. The qu go ahead. Your question is, what do we do now? Now what? Now what? Now what? So that was, we're still saying on these home builders, now what? Um, this, this doesn't mean just go buy it and, and hope for the best. This means... We don't know if the, if these are actually eight checks or they're just showing up in, because everything's looking good. Like what you have to look at all the qualitative aspects. If you so can look go at and this. understand this, go ahead. If you can go and understand this more, then you can do something with this. But for us, we weren't able to do that. Look at this, guys. They peaked in 2006, 15 billion dollars in revenue, and they bottomed out at 4.35 billion. That is a 70 percent decrease yeah. in the next five years. Yeah. That's a big number. Go look at the go look at the profit. So go back, Paul. Can you go back to that one? Is this where they were building all the houses that then people left out of, and then they didn't? Yeah, this them? is the the the, 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 the boom, the bust of um the real estate bust in two thousands. Yeah, so they had thirteen in two thousand seven, building all the houses people couldn't afford, and then after they couldn't afford them, there was a surplus. Now they're not building. No, this is not today. I know. That's right after the, the right. fall. So basically, right? bottom line is the fall happened. Their revenue fell seventy percent. Got it. Just making sure. So I'm just trying to explain now. Look at this. They did 15 billion in 2006. Last year they did 11.5. If I told you in 2006 that Pulte Homes would do 15 billion and then 15 years later they would do less, 20, 30% less, you'd have thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. It happens. It absolutely does happen. Yeah, happens. You okay there, Nate? Yeah. <laughs> Is he joking? Look, look at all the rice on the ground. <laughs> so just keep this in mind, guys, when you look at companies. This is my only apprehension about Pulte. Everything looks great from a number standpoint. Everything looks great. Except look, if that falls to $4 billion in revenue. I can't even tell you. I mean, this is insane. It's just what, like, so let's what's say. Their, what's their debt? 
That's what I'm saying. Wasn't total debt incredibly low. That's what I'm saying. Total yeah. is four point three billion. Some, there's something not right. Even if they sold half their inventory, look at their yeah. inventory costs. So, guys, the thing that we usually do, we don't go into detail here. When you look at current assets, inventory is eight billion of their ten billion in current assets. Yeah. Cut that eight billion in half. Say that their their houses can only sell for four billion dollars. They have to sell off quick. You still have six billion. You still have enough cash on hand to pay off all their debt. Yeah, and this is it's consistent across all the home builders. This was the reason. that's what worries me. Yeah, What's such, the a, catch? such a booming, booming business. What do we and miss? all of them? Do, what are we? What are we I, that's that's a very. That's what uh, Nikon saying is too good to be true. Maybe it, I don't know. That's we don't the, know. It could. It, this could be true, but it just doesn't make sense that you have this little like it's crazy. This little debt. If you love the uh, software behind Paul, you can get it. As, being a part of our Patreon, uh, you can join the Patreon link in the, is in the description below. As always, it's patreoncom slash We, uh, uh, Paul, we said earlier in the video we wanted 750 patrons was our, our major goal for this 725 entire, this whole year, and we just hit uh, well over 3,000 patrons. And if you look, our subscriber to patron ratio is absurd because we actually give you something more than a one hour Zoom chat, which you get with other Patreon pages. So the software is this incredible. This support. You're not supporting us with Patreon. That's right. You're supporting yourself and you're buying our software through Patreon. That's all you're doing. Mo, are people trading? Pulte, what's going on over there? I mean, Paul, these home builders are, are always great to trade because you have, you always have this. You get, you can run it up through the sweet spot and just go sideways for a really long time. Now, they're in a downtrend right now. I, I, it, let, to me, I, I mean, these are really hard for me to go and say short something like this just because of the trajectory that we have seen. And we don't have housing. I mean, housing is still climbing. It, that's just a fact. So until we get a big turnaround, I don't think we're going to see anything drastic to the downside for Pulte. But just be patient with it. If I'm you, I'm waiting for um, an uptrend to capitalize on this one. I am not going to try to get cute and try to short Pulte, unless you're doing it maybe from a swing trading perspective or, or a 15-minute perspective. But long term, I do not think it's the best play. That's just my personal opinion. But how about it if you want to? Just make sure you're using stops. Nothing exists. <laughs> Somebody requested SEK. We don't have an SEK ticker. Uh, Plex Pro uh, said SEK, unless I read it incorrectly. Maybe Plex, if you're still on, let me know. Um, SEK stock that doesn't exist. Okay. Hmm. Maybe a, this is a good question from somebody. They said, "Would options be better now for Pulte?" Now, the reason, the, what we do to sell options is we sell options on companies that we actually want to own. So I'm sure Pulte might have great options, but we don't want to own Pulte. So if we get assigned those shares, then we're in a position. We that don't want to own we Pulte right now with the information that we have. The information just, we have. Correct. Correct. The question would be, how do we? I mean, the, I mean, look at if we did the numbers here. What was their average? Um, look at. Let's do this again. Negative, let's call it, let's say pay $12 billion for the company. So you're only discounting, you're discounting everything big time. Mm -hmm. Free cash flow is 900 million and it's gonna grow by 3% a year and a free cash flow multiple of 12. You're still at 8.6%. Yeah. IRR, right? 8.6. That's only assuming free cash flow go 3% a year. So I look at it going, geez, LP, like, what do we do here? Now, if all of a sudden you have a drop, a random drop, I mean, that's gonna really affect it. So. I have to assume that there's going to be a random drop at some point. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just you know, a good investor like Warren Buffett or Gary Mashuras doesn't try to time things because of cycles. Mm -hmm. They want to pick a good, a good company. But I think if you want to look at shares, look at the other thing about shares. I think shares outstanding. You look at the shares outstanding when the collapse happened. Like right, so right now they have 265 million. When the collapse happened, Look at how much they increased their shares by. Was it drastic? Oh, big time. Because look. 253 to 375? 379, 380. Wow. But why? Wow. They had to do that because they had to raise capital. Right, right. So that's the thing. That's the double whammy that happens during bad times. Revenues go down, profit goes down, and they raise capital. Were right. they in a similar situation with their debt back then? Because that, that right there makes me say, okay, we are missing something. If, if they were in a similar situation and they had to go out and uh, increase shares that much, that's what make me make would excuse me, would make me say we are missing. They still had more, but it wasn't as good. Let's okay. see, hang on a second. Oh wait, 06, let me go to 06, yeah, 07. Current assets, 10 billion. For those of you that ask the kind of- No, they had about do? four or $5 billion more. That's the thing, guys. They had this exact same- Yeah, that's it, that's it. Now that I bet you their PE say. was a, well, let's look at their PE. So ready? Um, Let's look at their price back then. This is kind of an inside look at the deeper dive that we do before we go to the 10K. 
Just so look at this, guys. They were at fifty dollars a share back then. Yeah. In two thousand five, they were fifty dollars a share. Yeah. They hit a low of three dollars and seventy six cents a share. Jesus. If I told you that Pulte, one of the biggest developers in the U.S., would go from fifty dollars a share during what people consider to be the best real estate market ever to four dollars a share, you'd have told me, "Paul, you are crazy. Mm -hmm. You absolutely set out a crazy." And look what happened. Boom. Boom. It happened right there. This is leading right into, as you guys finish up, this is leading right into, Paul, uh, what about your take on the real estate in general, the market? W what advice could you give to people who need to get into a house or I deal with a lot of just married people? I'm switching topic a bit, but what's going on out there? It's just completely bonkers. It is completely bonkers. Guys, follow me on Instagram because I want to get the blue check mark. That's my goal in life, to get the blue check mark. On Instagram? Yeah. I have to get like way more subscribers. Yeah, follow, follow me. Follow me on Instagram, Paul Gabriel. Yeah, then Trader Mo is what's your things? Uh, Trader Mo underscore em. Trader Mo underscore em. Yep. Um, the real estate market in general, houses are just crazy bonkers. Yeah, they are. I heard a story the other day. Um, a fa somebody bought a house in 2017 for 150 thousand. Put some money into it, listed it for 199, sold for 230. Same day. These aren't million dollar homes, guys. These are $200,000 homes selling for 15% over ask. There was somebody that I heard, they had, they had put it on the market on, they, they went to market on Sunday, had like 79 showings, 13 offers, and sold it for like $65,000 over ask. On oh, what kind of price? Around 200. 200? Yeah. Around $200,000 home. 65 over? Over ask. By the way, with more 79 important, no, no. showings in one more day. More importantly is, that is 32% above ask. Don't worry yeah. about the dollar amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worry about the percentage. And 13 offers. On a $200,000 house, like guys, <laughs> a $200,000, by the way, Mo, uh, we gotta change the price of the house you're buying from me. That is true, Mo. Mo's closing on his house. Uh, he's buying my house on Friday. But it went up, Paul. <laughs> Are you ready, Mo? Now, the reason You know that what, I... put in your best offer. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you first, I'll give you first dibs. <laughs> the reason that I did go and decide to buy that, because I was, I was looking for land to build. And the construction oh, cost was crazy. The construction costs before all of this crazy construction cost was really high. And I was like, you know what? I'd rather buy an existing home. Now I can't even imagine what the house I would want to build would cost. Yeah. It would be out of this world. Yeah. So either way, the real estate market is just cr crazy. I mean, we're seeing it all over with assumptions being made. Guys, I know it sounds crazy. If everybody thinks I'm too conservative, I'm not too conservative. I'm just realistic and say, are we just during good, good times, everybody overassumes the future will be great. I look at it going, well, what's the past been? I don't think we're going to have the same 06, 07 crash in real estate. I don't even think we're going to have a crash, yeah. but things have to cool down a little bit. And when they cool down, Pulte will be hurt. And you saw their financials. They had way, they had about double the cash on hand, current assets, it's, it's total liabilities back in 06 and 07. But they issued a ton of shares, took a ton of losses. But I think they changed their business model. And this is something you have to look into for Pulte. I forgot about this. They used to buy land and then develop. Now I think, I don't know if they do that exactly. I think what they do now is the Ryan Holmes model, which is get a developer to develop the land and they take options on the lots, uh, which is a way less risky version. Way less risky. Yeah, uh, uh, we did a reaction video to Ben Mala and he said uh, today, Paul, that he's, he came out today and said he's gonna buy your house. <laughs> Just right, 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 right out of the grass from Mo. He's putting in a bid on, well over ask, I assume. What are you laughing about, oh, Mo? As long as he does his homework, it's cool. Yeah, the worst thing you can do is not do your homework. <laughs> what does that mean? You gotta the worst do your thing homework. You, you gotta do your homework. Uh, what does that mean? You gotta hire your inspector. Paul, um, biggest mistake I ever made was not reading the contract. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You gotta do your homework. Paul, when are you gonna be smoking Newport 100s on the show? You gotta do your homework. <laughs> yes. I never lost money on a deal. Where's my bacon? That's mean. I shouldn't be doing that. Apparently, his fans oh. are coming after us, and he's worth a ton of money. A zillion well, dollars. That, 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 um, never mind. He's probably doing something right. Being rich there. doesn't mean. Oh, you're it smart. doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. No, that's Bernie well, Madoff is and rich. And vice versa. You don't have to be that smart to be that rich. I mean, you've seen it a lot, right? I mean, of course. You don't have to By be the way, deal <laughs> fees are different than performance fees. What are you laughing about, Mo? What Cedric said. What do you say? He said, uh, yeah, Mala's going to put a hit out that. on these yeah, guys. We said that. Whatever. We're, we're safe here in uh, Akron. Let's do a sit on me. We're safe here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul. Um, I would say that. That's the five um, companies? Yeah, I would say that um, you know, literally 40 people asked for Tattooed Chef. Different people all want to see Tattooed Chef. Great. Give 50 bucks and we'll look at Tattooed Chef. 
It's a great idea, Paul. Actually, give Sonny five dollars because Tattooed Chef is going to take. We're going to do a lot of work on this one because there's like the numbers aren't good. Sonny five dollars for Tattooed Chef. A donation made to the Innocence Project is is this week's charity. We're giving the money away. It's not for us. Um, it's seventy five dollars gets you Tattooed Chef. Come on, guys. It's all for charity. Not a single dollar for any of us idiots in this room. Um, okay, let's keep going. Um, so Plax Pro uh, donated and then came, he, he typed S-E-K. I don't know what that meant, but if you're in here, Plax, let us know. We can get back to you for sure or owe you one. Um, yeah. Um, Mo, what's going on? Uh, tell people with how they can follow you more. If they're new to the channel, you can check uh -huh. out Mo in the morning. Talk about your morning show. Yeah, so 9 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday, we read through the news of the day. Um, economic news, we'll read some charts. We'll, I'll teach you guys some things. Like this morning, I taught a little bit about the yield curve and inversion of yield curve and what that means for the markets. Uh, we talk a little bit about inflation. I'm going to be doing something where I'm going to show you guys what happened. I, I, do, I show, show you guys a sequence of events of kind of how we got to this point of the market. But um, yeah, it's just informative little show and um, people seem to love it. And if you want to follow me personally, join the Bid and Ask Nation. I have charts. Uh, I have the Employed Trader series. All the five stocks are now out. There's going to be a video coming later today that's going to be updating for the very first time. And there are going to be daily updates on what to do with these five stocks. And I'm basically going to hold your hand and do it for you. Um, Paul, P uh, Dustin was asking, is there a real estate ETF that you would consider shorting during this craziness? I mean, guys, sh um, shorting, shorting is not probably the most ideal thing to do if you're not doing it on a chart. That's just my personal. Yeah, I, think I, I mean, don't, don't short me. based on don't short based on what you think is going to happen in the economy. You want to do that by puts. Yes. That's the best way to, sh that's the most, uh, that's the least risky way to, well, not least risky. Um, don't, sh don't naked short. Don't be stupid like me. <laughs> um, Paul, what is your, um, I, I know you did some research this weekend. I'd love to get your updated Bitcoin price prediction. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Um, I think 1.7 billion per, per coin. coin. Yeah, yeah 1.7 billion. I That's feel very conservative. I feel very bullish. Mo, you did a ton of research yesterday. You stayed in. <laughs> yeah, what did I research yesterday? Bitcoin. You did. You oh, told I did me. that one too. Yeah. And what, uh, what was the one that I researched this weekend? Stella. Stella Lumens. Stella Lumen. <laughs> that one I had at a billion. Bitcoin. I'm going a little less than Paul. I'm not. I'm not that bullish. I'm at 900,000. 900,000 per coin. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. All right. Um, books you'd recommend for trading, Paul? Turtle for trade? trading? Turtle trading. Turtle trading is the only book in trading that I've read. I loved it. It's momentum trading. It's not chart reading. The Complete Turtle Trader, I absolutely effing loved it. I literally picked it up, didn't put it down, read it two or three times. I absolutely loved it. Mo, did you hear that Mo's writing a book, Paul? Mo, you're I, writing a book? I thought about it. Are you or aren't you? I've thought about it. That's not what I asked you. I don't know. I don't want to do it. Then don't do it. I want to dictate a book. That would be good. Well, then work with a work with somebody. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody asked about Biogen. I think we should. Monday is uh, the announcement for the drug aducanumab from the FDA. So, if you're in it, be careful. I, I've heard. I've been reading like Seeking Alpha and stuff. People are saying that this thing could. And history shows on these charts. This thing can go to 375 a share or 175 a share, depending on what the FDA decides. So, have stops in place. If you're in it for value, know that if it goes to 175 bucks, it's still a good company. I was telling them right before the show. Ideal situation for me as an investor, not a patient, that drug fails and we get all of this nonsense out of the way because they have a great pipeline outside of this drug and then we can just like be a normal company. But for the patients, I hope this drug works. So they're because, factoring in their price currently of that thing going through. Yeah. So I mean, what's the decision that's being made on Tuesday they're gonna or Thursday? They're going to decide if this can go to the next phase. Who's and, they? And the FDA. And okay. if they can give it to uh, patients because the, there was safety that was the concern. Um, and they've delayed this decision twice already. January and March, so. Interesting. We'll see. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Okay. Paul, the the company S E K. Is Diego, it? stop with the fuel cell. Yeah, good lord. And Carnival, you know the rules. Fifty. There you go. There we go. What? I'm sorry. Somebody deleted it. Oh, that was me. Okay. Um, this is an Australian company. It's Seek Limited. Do you want to do an Australian company? Did somebody pay? Yeah. I mean, I don't. I, I'm I'm on white charts. Give me the ticker. S E K. I, I'm telling you, I don't have it. It's, so it says A E X A S X S E K. I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing. How do you spell seek? S E E K. Oh, oh. Oh, here we go. Seek Limited. That's it. Yeah. You erase your name up there. No. Hang on a second. Okay. I'm gonna find the one. Oh, wow, the market's down. Yeah. This what up, Jacob? 
The directory.com? What is this? Oh, this thing? Okay. Yes, it did. Okay, so now this is wide charts, guys, because we don't have the international yet. So I'm going to go based off wide charts here. It's an $8 billion market cap, no PE because it's lost money. And a profit margin obviously is negative. They've lost money. But here's the good news. They have a very high gross margin, 76% gross margin. That's a good thing. That means for every dollar extra they bring in revenue, 76 cents goes to profit, okay? To pay off all their, to pay their operating expenses, all that stuff. So that's a very high. Now, how do they have a freaking dividend with no, either way. So two X's so far. Revenue growth over the past five years? 692 to 1 billion, check mark there. Yeah. Okay, profit over the last five years, 260 to a loss of 75. Okay, so that's why we're looking at this thing here. They have a loss, so obviously last year was rough for them. So it's an X there. Shares outstanding, also an X, 172 to 176. And they tend to increase their shares slightly every year. I mean, look at this. Over time, they're increasing their shares. Okay, so so far, I think we have all, we have only one check so far. We did talk about earlier in the show that Paul just signed a, a bill, an invoice for $200 thousand dollars to pay for the software you're getting as a patron and paul what is to come for foreign exchange companies on the everything money software we selected seven it's more than seven exchanges we got like all of the baltic we got a ton if you're in the patreon and the discord I, I posted it on saturday or something it's it's a lot we have a lot of other company other indexes coming in or uh, sorry other exchanges coming in this thing is only getting better and better and somebody somebody said the other day I'm getting all of this for $23 a month. Yes, now it's 24 a month and the price is going higher and higher. So you have to decide what you want. You want the list? You want to read them? Nah, I don't want to read them. Actually, I'll read them, fine. Yeah, Paul, read them. This is important because a lot of, tons of people all over the world, they want yeah, to hear what, what, what's Two coming pages. to- uh... Two pages. Second, second page. Okay, LSE, Hold Berlin. on, before you get into that, let me be very clear out there, folks. Is there are other channels that, that call us out saying we're only in this for the money, that we're selling you some BS. In essence, we are you, you're purchasing the software, and I guarantee there is not a YouTuber out there that's dropping two hundred thousand dollars on software for you to use. It's mind-boggling. The two Teslas we're giving away, um, everything you get becoming a patron. Paul, go ahead and talk about the exchanges you're paying for over the next two years. Okay, so here are the exchanges. It's actually twenty exchanges. I thought it was seven. It's actually twenty. I don't know what LLC, London Stock Exchange. Uh, Berlin, Dusseldorf, Frankfurt, Hamburg, Hanover. Um, I don't remember what these ones are. These next two, München, um, Zetra, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Toronto, Armenia, Armenia, <laughs> Armenia, uh, Riga, Tallinn, Vilnius, Copenhagen, Helsinki, Stockholm, uh, Six Swiss, and Oslo. All coming to you at uh, all 20 exchanges coming to you here in the next few months. Exciting stuff. I mean, listen, literally, you're crazy for not signing up. You're literally nuts. You get the Discord, you get all these. Other Why don't you just keep that 200 grand to yourself? Well, for one thing, it is profitable for me, which it should be. But the other thing is, I, I want software that people are going to listen to our methods and use to make themselves more wealthy. That's it. Here's the bottom line we've gotten to the point where. I always tell people now, if you don't find the value in the software, you're looking for something, as Tim said, you're looking for something completely different because everything, if you like what we're talking about here, the software will only make you better. And for 80, 90 cents a day, a dollar a day, you could have it. If I asked you for a dollar every single day, you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't even think about it. You'd be like, yeah, here you go, Paul. Stop bothering me. A dollar a day. That's what it's going to cost. Not even going to cost you that. And your price doesn't go up except for, you know, cost of producing it over time. So Canadians are free. The, 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 the comments are pouring in. People from Pakistan, Canadians are now freaking out. Uh, yeah, guys, we told you this was coming. If you're in the Patreon, Paul announced some of these due dates that, trust me, he sticks to, if not beats. Um, this is not an Elon Musk operation. Yeah, I was going to say he's not Elon. Yeah, we're not going to promise something and then just make you wait for years and years and years. So, um, And that's all thanks to Tim as well. Tim does a great job managing our our seven team developer crew, four for um, Dynasty Owner, three for Everything Money. And if you like fantasy sports, go to dynastyowner.com, sign up. You get a, if you're a patron, you get a, between a five and 15% discount, depending on which level you're in. Tell them the email commission. E email if commission. If you want to get the, the discount, email commission at dynastyowner.com and we'll help you with the discount. But sign up first, 
secure your spot, then we'll give you the discount. But that's part of the whole being a part of the Patreon. Okay, Paul, we're back to... And that's a yearly fee. That's not even a monthly fee. That's a yearly fee for Dynasty Owner. It's $39 a year. Yep, if you're in love with fantasy football and you want to try something new, Dynasty Owner involves real, actual player contracts. Did you hear what Dan said the other day, our, our, our bus driver the other day for Limo King? Go on. He texted Connor. Mm -hmm. And he, he said to Connor, Connor, I asked my good friend who loves fantasy sports if you'd ever heard of Dynasty Owner, and the guy's response was, best fantasy football platform out there. You absolutely can can uh, write this off as education and training for Patreon, for a company. You could write this off as education. Guys, everything I do here is a write-off because it's a business expense. I'm generating revenue, so I write off everything. So even though it's $200,000 in write-off... Not you. I'm talking about our viewers can write it off. I do oh, that all I don't time. know. You can talk to an accountant. Absolutely. I have no idea. I do that. I take training classes from Listen, you can write off over. anything you want. The question is, if you get caught, are you going to get busted? That's it. I'll be your financial or I'll be your tax consultant. <laughs> Just have them... It's all for entertainment purposes only. CC <laughs> yeah. me in the email. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, we are at current assets over liabilities for Seek Limited. The oh yeah, I forgot company. about that. <laughs> Seek Limited. Current assets. All over right, current assets is five hundred fifty-four million. Current liabilities is seven hundred twenty-one million. That's an X. Yeah, boy. Ready for free cash flow, Seth? You can help me out here. Free cash flow. Go Why is it not even showing me? Oh my God, it's not even showing me cash from operations. Oh boy. <laughs> We're going to go with last year free cash flow. It's a lot. It's 88 plus 50 is 143, 65, call it 200, 240, less 11, less 25, 36. Call it $200 million in free cash flow in the last year. Okay. Um, times 20 is 4 billion. The current market cap is 8 billion. Yeah, so it's an X there. Guys, I don't know anything about this company. Um, it's, I don't know what to say. It's overpriced at the moment, in your opinion. We're, we're overpriced. Yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing major growth here. That just, I mean, look at the income. You're, you're, selling for 40, you're selling currently for 40 times last year's free cash flow. And look at this income growth. It jumped up, but then it's really been stale for the last three years. I don't know. You look back here, it was pretty stale for a while. I, I, I'm, a, I'm not, to me, I'm like, yawn, next. Most of for people trading this, I, I got, you can't I got, see it, right? No, I got nothing. I, yeah. I mean, it's showing me a volume of 35. So even Yahoo Finance isn't having an update on this. So sorry, guys. Brian wants a stock, Paul. He just paid a $50 donation to the Innocence Project. He wants to look at Danoas. Danoas. Yeah, Danoas, oh, whatever. D-A-C is the ticker symbol. Look at that chart. D-A-C Look at that chart. It was four dollars. It four dollars in July. Now it's sixty three. Denoas is a shipping company, a decentralized administration of Attica, Greece. What is going on? Founded nineteen seventy two. Um, their subsidiaries are shipping, Deleas shipping, shipping. Okay, okay. Here we go. Uh, wow, look at that. Yeah, you're right, Paul. Look at that chart. That's ticker symbol. Go. Ticker symbol is D A C. Thank you. D A C or D A S? I'm sorry. Did I say S? D A C. D A C. Yeah, D A C. You're fine. Wow. I got it wrong. All right, guys, so $1.3 billion company, PE of three, <laughs> check mark. Yeah. How can you have a profit margin greater than your gross margin? You tell me, baby. Yeah, that's not possible. <laughs> is, everything money, is everything money wrong? Or Let's look at white charts, DAC. DAC, P-O-P. Mm -hmm. They lose, mm -hmm. what? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure you guys fondle the thumbs up while we're waiting for Paul to get his stuff together. <laughs> All right, let's just move on from that. Okay, go on. Income statement, guys. Ready? Um, 470 million to 487, check mark there. Barely. Now, shipping, I think it's going to be a huge. I, I mean, shipping right now is like going through the roof insane. Yep. The cost for us to ship stuff has been insane. I mean, like on cargo ships. Profit, they lost 400 million to making 400 million. Check mark there. Why do they, that's a big loss right there. They must have had a write off or something. That's a big number. Shares outstanding. Ooh. Too much? 7.84 to 20. Oh my Lord, help us. That's bad. You tripled it? Yeah, there must have been an acquisition because look, when 7.84, 14.9, 24.5, 20 20.29. Huh, interesting. Let's go to their balance sheet. 118 million in current. 
Assets, 239 in current liabilities. That's an X. Uh-oh. Cash flow. Free cash flow is pillar number seven. Uh, X, 239 down to 168. That's an X. Average of 175 times 20 equals 3.5 billion. What was the market cap? I didn't even put it down, sorry. Okay, 3.5 billion on our desired oh, oh, market cap. Oh, 1.3 billion. All right, so it's lower. Interesting. Um, a lot of shares out staying though, guys. A lot of shares issued. Paul Brady per year just joined the chat. What up, Brady? Uh, you guys, uh, Brady is a dear friend of mine in the photography world. He owns uh, Blacksmith Albums out of California. If you're a photographer, which is probably one of you in here, Colin, I see you. Uh, check out Brady. Actually, yeah, that's funny. All right, let's get, actually, actually, Paul, uh, what funny stories. Brady introduced me to Colin Combs Uke. Oh, funny really? Story. Yeah. So, oh, um, what are your thoughts on this shipping company? <sighs> You're iffy on this. I mean, I don't like the shares outstanding. It's just like I said. Go find out why they. By the way, look at the stock price back in 2008. David Spicer said shipping companies issue shares to buy ships. I mean. Y wow. Yippee, it doesn't, but here's my thing. Okay, Spicer, you might that's be a, right. That's a massive increase, though. So here's the deal. They tripled their shares outstanding, and let's look at their income in that time. Yeah, that it's the same. Okay, so there you go. So that's where I look at it going, yeah, that's great, but it's not doing anything. they bought ships. <laughs> yeah. They didn't get any revenue from it. If I saw a tripling or quadrupling of revenue, I go, okay, that can make sense. Yeah. And I saw the profit go up with such high mar margin. I expect the profit to go up six, seven times. That makes sense, but we're not seeing that. I look at this going, could this be a mismanaged business? I don't know. So I would avoid this. That's my opinion. Crute is saying, why don't we look at return on equity? Is that something you look at, Paul? I mean, you can. There's, 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 um, return on equity is very high here. This is a lack of equity. Equity is assets minus liabilities. Assets minus liabilities is equity. So when you say net income divided by equity to see how much money they're making on their equity, I mean, it's a metric to look at. It is definitely a metric to look at. They have a very high um, return on assets of 14.83%. So it's just, I mean, the, the, this is a good, more, if you read the Intelligent Investor, they talk about return on equity a lot. It's one way to look at profitability. I, I don't for any other reason than, to me, it's just a tool to look at and say, okay, they don't have a lot of equity. So it doesn't take, I, I don't know. It's just, Equity is also affected a lot by um, depreciation and things like that. So it's like, oh, okay. Anyhow. Paul, Paul what about uh, Paul? Mo, what about trading this? What are people doing? Oh, uh, this is for sure a power stock. What does um, that mean again? It sounds in, awesome. Yeah. So in, in August of 2019, they came through the sweet spot and they have just been going, they've just been going sideways on their stochastic over 80% and increasing in price ever since then. So guys, for those of you that are, that I talk about power stocks all the time, this is your ideal power stock. And this is, this is literally what companies used to do on a consistent basis. They would come through the sweet spot and they'd go sideways for a very long time on their stochastic and the price would increase. So this thing is pretty ideal. Um, I mean, if it, if it makes a brand new all-time high, go ahead, and, go ahead and take a position in it. But uh, you're, it's kind of hitting a resistance point. This has been about three weeks it's been sitting here. So it can't break out. Eventually, this probably will break out. Um, well, I shouldn't say it probably will. There's a higher probability that it will. But this is uh, this is an ideal power stock. I need to like take a screenshot of this and save this and uh, put it in my files. This is great. That's it. Well, some people are screenshotting. Uh... Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't even know where this is going. <laughs> Most screenshotting ticker symbols and charts. Um... Guys, um, I'd like to thank everybody who signed up. For, we had the biggest month ever for our software last month. I think we net like 800 people. Today, we've had 38 signups so far. I can't even, we're even getting the emails from Patreon. That's how busy it's been. So I can't really thank everybody. But um, there are a lot of people I will thank just really quick. Marco, Ando, Andy, Marco, Ando, Marco, Ando, Andy, Jason, Dwayne, Anthony, Peter, Miguel, Alex, Walter. But we're getting so much more. The emails aren't even coming through on Patreon yet. They'll be coming in later. So I appreciate the support. But more importantly, you guys are doing yourself a service by paying nothing for software that's going to be, that's so valuable to you. We're gonna add economic, there's so much data that's gonna be added to the software. It's gonna be incredible. We have a video coming out tomorrow talking about our thoughts on AMC. We have another video coming out about NEO, an update on NEO, the uh, EV, uh, the Chinese EV company. We talked about Boeing and our thoughts on Boeing. 
as well as uh, some of our ideas on raising the minimum wage and how it can affect the world around us. I would say, Paul, something that's near and dear to my heart is, would you mind doing a very quick look at Hasbro real quick? This Hasbro. is my Magic the Gathering was purchased by Hasbro, and they're opening up opening up much like the world is opening up is more people 35 million magic players over the world and there's online magic they make a lot of money from this maybe you can give us a little once over on hasbro would be helpful for me all right 13 billion dollar market cap 32 pe that's an x 7.5 percent profit margin that's also an x but a very high gross margin of almost 58 percent decent dividend 2.8 percent yields out 373 million dollars a year so we're gonna have to sit there and go look at the numbers and see if they can support that. So two X's so far. Okay. Income. Um, revenue growth. Five, okay, revenue, 5.04 to 5.47, check mark. Not that much growth. Yeah, not much at all. Profit? By the way, I want to understand, when I say five year growth, this is actually four years, one, two, three, four, but I just go to the fifth year. So if you guys prefer that, or me to go back an extra, whatever it is, it's anyways. Net income, 571 down to 408 uh -oh. that's an x these numbers are surprising to me keep going well, of course because you're you love uh Magic of the gathering. i got emotions involved i just said gathering of course you do barcelona you know uh 125 that. to 137 and shares outstanding also an x oh lord kenny look at this a friend of mine's <laughs> in here oh boy all right let's go to the balance sheet they should convert all their um assets into uh magic the gathering cards yeah they might just reprint them to make money that would kill us all <laughs> 3.85 billion in cash to 2.4 billion. That's a check mark there. Okay. Cash flow. The average of 625 million. They went from 760 to 943. Check mark. So 625 times 20 is 13 billion. What was their market cap? I forgot. Jesus Christ, Seth. Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't you ask for it? I did. I'm just enamored. 13 billion. So it's about right. Well, assuming I would sit there and say, no, you shouldn't pay 20 times free cash flow here because there's not there's much no growth grow. happening. Click on the eight pillars to show people real quick there. Boom. So guys, yeah. they only have three of the eight pillars, but this is the big, I don't know if I like that one. You know what I mean? I look at that and this going, it's a very slow growth company. Um, toys, getting more and more digital. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Well, they're making digital toys, so. Of course, yeah. they have to. So um, I just think it's a lot for this company. Address some of, Paul, address some of our new, uh, Tim, where am I going with this? They're asking about Abdon. What do we call it? Moderators. Address some of our new moderators on YouTube and the Discord. How are we growing, Paul, and handling the growth? Um, so as we get bigger and bigger, we're going to be asking patrons who are very active in our communities to be moderators, kind of like Wikipedia has moderators there. Same thing here. Um, we just are very big on the customer service aspect of responding very quickly. So as time goes on, it's not going to be flawless, but as time goes on, we want to make sure that people are getting answers to their questions and help as fast as possible. And of course, the most, the best way to do it is from other users. So if you're interested and you're a user, um, w watch out for Patreon announcements. We need when we need more. We'll make an announcement and just put your name in for it, and we'll go from there. Jose is asking, do the early eight pillar tier, eight pillar thriller tiers, they qualify for the top two. No, the answer is no. Our Patreon only streams on Thursdays or for those top tiers. The people in the Bidnast Nation and Paul's tier are paying triple. I will be doing other live streams at some point for the Lower Minions tiers. tier. Of course I will be. But obviously other people, when they pay much bigger amounts of money, it, I want to give them a little more attention. No offense. Obviously the software is a va massive, valuable deal for you guys and the Discord community. It, it's, it's an incredible community. And uh, we'll be doing more. We doing shorts now? Yeah, everyone wants to see the My shorts. My throat hurts really bad. And by the way, uh, we'll while you're adjusting you get... the camera, what? Not you. Um, can you get me a water? Set here. Here, give him this one. It's brand. It's brand new. Is it cold? Yeah. Look, look at these shorts. Uh, okay. No, he's been working out. He's, he's, Guys, I wear these shorts a lot. He goes with the white shoes, you, kind of a frothy butt cheeks. I mean, you're really looking good, Paul. I mean, considering the, the nerd that you were for your whole life, I mean, you're looking very svelte nowadays. Did we ever show that picture here? <sighs> we should pull. We should do more old pictures of us. Oh my, I, I posted it on my Instagram, on my story once. Look at that. Well, all right. Um, I think okay. we're done here. Hey, Saturday, uh, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, I'm going to be doing a Bidnask Nation and Paul Super Shorts, I guess you're going to be thrown in there. Um, uh, bu 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 live stream? Live stream, Patreon only live stream. So bring your general Q&A, charts, Q&A, whatever you want to talk about. 10 to 11, 11.30, I'll hang out with you guys and uh, we'll do that on Saturday morning. And I am Eastern. Talk about the investment for the top tier, Paul. We need to just make a top tier. We need, I think we need to go back to just having the top tier sit there so people can book it. 
Um, I don't want to do that. I want the, the top tier to be from patrons only. If you want part of the top tier, which is my tier, it's a instead of being two hundred fifty dollars a month, it's a flat fee of twenty four hundred paid up front for the full year. So you get a discount from two fifty down to two hundred paid up front, no refunds because I want people to be active, not jumping in and out. Um, it's a great tier. People talk about a lot of things all across the board. Join it if you're serious about learning, about engaging with people. Um, it's awesome. So it's it's only going to be if you're interested. Email help at everythingmoney.com. Nick will help you. He'll get you charged. Last month, I think we had eight or nine upgrades for people who wanted the full, they paid up in full. It's going well. And I'm going to limit that group to only at most 100 people. I think there's like 50 or 55 in there right now. Well, Kenny is asking, you know, we do, we do realize that a lot of the new patrons jump on. We welcome a bunch of you today. And it, it is, um, how would I say this? We do have a well-established community that you're entering. So this will take time, folks. If you just jump in and think you're going to get after it after one day, you got to get into some certain chats. We're going to make some new videos, especially for the Bid Nast Nation, where Mo is going to walk you through his welcome to the Patreon. These are the channels, depending on where you might be, where you want to look. And, uh, and, and, and the Everything Money website that you're buying into today will be, we, we hope moving forward, your financial website that you open up every morning. We're getting news articles. We're going to have writers write for us. We're going to have all of our videos. If you pull up a stock on Biogen, we'll have all of our videos of everything we said over all the years in Biogen's own little web page. So we're working toward this. Uh, obviously, you, uh, it's going so well, we're, we're trying to keep up. But I assure you, Paul and his uh, credit card is going bonkers trying to, to uh, um, make you guys make make the make it pleasurable for you guys to get in there. Pleasurable. Why do I say that? I like it. Yeah. So. All right. That's our take, guys. Um, what a show, Paul. Yeah. See you in a week. Nate, give me some music on the way out. Uh, yeah. We'll see you in a week. Thursday. Joe, Mo, uh, join Mo in the morning at nine. Uh, join us patreon top tier only on thursdays at one and nate um did the camera work where are you babe and then me on saturday morning yep and um thanks guys keep it up talk in the discord because everybody there wants to discuss stocks mindset we just started a business chat too which is awesome and i really love talking about growing businesses tickle the thumbs up on the way out we love you guys see you next week see you next tuesday see you guys awesome